So your friend or family member just had a stroke and you don't know what to do or how you can help. I'm gonna share four things with you that you need to know on what a stroke is, what the recovery process is like after a stroke, and what you can do to make their recovery process successful. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna share my number one tip that you should do right now to really make an impact and get them stronger and healthier and get them home faster. Before I get going, my name is Austin Madriaga. I'm a doctor of physical therapy and a certified stroke rehab specialist. I work in the rehab unit of the hospital where every single week I'm working with patients post-stroke. With that said, let's go ahead and start with the video. So once your friend or family member arrives in the hospital, they're gonna arrive through the emergency department, ED for short, and this is where they're gonna start their acute care phase of their recovery. In this acute care phase, this covers anything between the emergency department, if they need surgery or not, so the surgical unit, the intensive care unit, or the ICU, or any medical needs that they need in other units. Whether or not they're gonna require brain surgery for the stroke, the whole goal of the acute care phase is to get them medically stabilized. If you don't know which room your friend or family member is in, make sure you check in at the front desk of the hospital and ask them. Sometimes there may be hospital restrictions where you may actually not be able to enter the room because of any sort of medical needs or restrictions that the patient has. When you do visit them in the hospital, prepare yourself to step into that room. What I mean by that is they may likely be on some heavy medications. Their words may not make sense. They might be a little bit more emotional, sometimes a little bit sedated. Overall, in this acute care phase of the stroke, be prepared to potentially see a different person than you knew prior to their stroke. Okay, number two, I think it's important to know that no two strokes are ever the same. The stroke that you may know about or have seen in somebody else is not gonna be the exact same way for your friend or family member. What happens in the brain in short is that there is a blood vessel that either bursts or is blocked in the brain causing damage in one or multiple parts and this can really damage the body as well. So a big question that I get from a friend or family member is how fast is the recovery? So it really depends and there's no straightforward answer to this question. But there are factors such as the location of the stroke, the size, how long ago it happened. Those are all things that can make a big factor to someone's prognosis or how likely they are to recovery as well as some psychosocial factors such as depression. And also a big one is really patient participation. And what I mean by patient participation is that how motivated is this person going to be when they go to therapy and to exercise? How willing are they to really get better and get back to where they were prior to the stroke? A lot can be going on in their mind and oftentimes it may not be positive. So this brings me to an important point and that is, one of your first roles as a friend or family member is to be an encourager. Really encourage them to work hard with therapy, participate in all the sessions, and really tell them that even though life has hit you hard, that you're gonna make yourself through this, through all the medical team, through all the therapy team, and as well as with you as their friend or family member. Okay, number three, now that you're in the room with them at bedside, one of the other things that you need to be doing is to closely observe. Whether you're in the room for 30 minutes, three hours, or the entire day, you need to be picking up on things that they are able to do, what they're not able to do, and maybe things that just don't seem right to them. Now, I think this is very important because frequently, the medical team is gonna be coming in and out of the room, and oftentimes, if there is a family member or friend in the room, they're gonna ask you some questions on what they were like before the stroke, what do you see now that's different, and you're gonna be a key person that they're gonna be contacting, especially if you're in the room with them. So whether you're in the room for a little bit of time or a long time, making sure that you're closely observing things around them, the person themselves, and what you're seeing. One of the things that you should be observing is their vitals. Now this includes anything such as the blood pressure, the heart rate, their oxygen. There is usually a big monitor next to their bed that has all these numbers. Now this is really the job of the nurse to keep track of this, but when I say closely observe the vitals, I don't mean to research what the lowest numbers are, what the highest numbers are, what the normal is, but really just trying to see, you know, if you're there in the morning and some of the numbers look okay to you and they're pretty steady and you've already checked in with a nurse and they say that they are completely fine. And maybe as you stay there a little bit longer, you see some of those numbers change and you hear some beeping in the room 
Typically, you may be one of the first people to catch anything that's going on, maybe within the first 10 seconds. So if you see something, then say something to the nurse right away. Okay, number four, we're gonna fast forward a little bit and let's say that they are now medically stabilized. However, the medical team has decided that they're not quite safe to go home yet. And this can be for many reasons, such as they're not able to walk yet, they're not even able to take care of themselves, such as bathing themselves, grooming, cleaning. They may not be cognitively intact, meaning that they're still a little bit confused, their safety awareness is off, and they don't really have the insight on their safety for going home. And all of that at this point is okay, because depending on the facility that you're in, there may be what's called the rehabilitation or rehab unit that they can go to next. And this is the unit that I work in, the rehab unit. Typically, this is where people go from the acute care phase of their stay and the recovery, and they transition into the rehab unit before they get to go home. With rehab, people spend about two to three weeks here. Again, they're gonna be sleeping here, they're gonna be eating here. This is where they're gonna get all their therapy sessions. And the ultimate goal of rehab is to get them from their current level of function, how they are now, to their prior level of function, how they were before the stroke, as well as before they got to the hospital. So there are three things that you need to do to improve their success while they're here in rehab. The first thing is to let the therapy team do what they need to do, and as well as do what they do best. Oftentimes you need to be hands off and stepping back and allow the patient to work with the therapist so that the patient can provide the therapist their undivided attention and they can really just focus on the session as a whole without having to be distracted. Number two, it's that you should be present in the room whenever you can. Research has shown that the recovery of stroke can be delayed up to two years if someone is depressed. So be in the room with them, encourage them, keep them company, and really just motivate them to get better because depression, while it is so prevalent, can really make a difference in somebody's recovery. Number three, and even though this may seem very minuscule, this can be really important, and it's to ask the therapist that is working with your friend or family member how you can help them or how you can supplement the session. Sometimes I'm working with my patient and there is a family member at the bedside and I really just simply tell them, hey, can you bring some pictures that they really love or pictures of family or pets? And then we just display it around the room and this can really make a difference because again, like I said, they're sleeping in this room. So oftentimes the first thing that they do when they wake up is that they see and they look around the room and that they are so motivated and they are happy. And this just gives them a little bit of boost in order for them to get home way faster. These are things that really make a big difference in not only their mood, but their strength, their coordination, and their overall recovery, and ultimately how they're gonna get home. If you've made it this far in a video, I just wanna thank you for watching. I think you've made an important and necessary step into really helping your friend or family member out. Now, I went over the acute care phase as well as the rehab phase, but I'm gonna show you my number one tip that you can do right now that's gonna make the biggest difference. And that tip is to fully educate yourself on strokes in general. What type of stroke that they had. If you don't know this, just ask the nurse, the medical team, or the therapy team. The prognosis for the stroke that they had, recovery times, anything that you should look out for. To get you started, I provided some links here on the screen and as well as in the description to help you out. Again, thank you for watching this video. You're already making a big step by watching this so you can help your friend or family member. My name is Austin Madriaga. I am a licensed and practicing physical therapist, as well as I'm a certified stroke rehab specialist. If you've enjoyed or have benefited from this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.